My name is Carlton Cartwright, and I am the executive director for the for Veterans Memorial and Multicultural Histories Incorporated. And today is August 18th, 2021, and I am here with, sir, what is your name? Kevin Humes. Okay, Kevin, and um, what city do you live in? Miami Gardens, Florida. Okay, great. And uh, when is your birthday? December 7th, 1958. Okay, all right. Where, where, where were you born? Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, where did you go to school? Grand Rapids, Michigan. I graduated from uh, Ottawa Hills High School in Grand Rapids. Okay. Joined the military from there. Mm -hmm. uh, did you go to college before yeah. you went into service? No, after. Afterwards? Yeah. Okay, so you say you joined what branch? I joined the Army in 1976. Uh -huh. um, and and when I was stationed at... Um, my basic training was at Fort Knox, Kentucky. I left Fort Knox. I went to Aberdeen, Maryland. Uh, my training consists of artillery field, artillery repairmen. Uh, and that's where I also went to University of uh, Maryland while I was serving in the military as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so where was basic training? Fort Knox, Tech, Kentucky. And, and where was your technical school? Uh, Aberdeen, Maryland. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. How, how, how long was... Uh, basic and tech, how long? Um, basic was at that time was about seven to eight weeks mm -hmm. and tech was about three months. Okay, all right. And um, did you suffer any injuries or anybody in your platoon? No, not at that or particular unit? Not at that particular time, but further on in my military career I did receive some disabilities. Okay, all right. And what year was it that you went into service? 1976. Gotcha, okay. All right. Um, so when did you did you go on leave while you were in in uh, training at all? No. Okay. When you when when uh, after your three months training was over, did you take a break? Yeah. R &R? I, went, I went on leave for thirty days mm -hmm. prior to going to Germany. Okay. Where did you go in Germany? Um, I went to Wiesbaden. I was stationed in Wiesbaden my first tour for about two and a half three years. Mainz. Yeah. Well, not not that far from Mainz. Maybe about thirty. 35 Ks from Mike's. Okay. I was in the Mad the Wiesbaden area. Okay. 30, about 30 clicks from Frankfurt. Gotcha. All right. What, okay. The um, reason I asked because I was at Camp Lindsay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, not that far from me. But it's not about me. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but we, gotcha. the bus stopped from, from, right. from Camp Perry to Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. Okay. All right. Uh huh. And why did you join the army? I joined the army. Um, uh, at that particular time, I was a, a, a troubled young man. Uh huh. And basically, the army saved my life. Uh, I, I'm from a pretty pretty rough community, got in a little trouble, um, went into delayed entry program. My mother signed off for me. Then that's when my career started. Okay. So how long were you stationed, Beesbod? About almost two and a half years. Okay. Close to three. Uh huh. And um, so tell me about the tour. I love Wiesbaden. I was a young guy, 17, <laughs> in Wiesbaden. Right. Um, I was, I, a lot of my focus was, I worked for uh, 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 an external program inside of the military, youth, a youth program, because I was young. And some of my, uh, my, my, my squad leaders said, well, let's get you in somewhere. Because I was, when I enlisted, there was a lot of Vietnam veterans in, in there. Okay. And it was a plague with heroin and drug addiction, etc. And why we served back in '76. So my leaders they recognized I had something. They took me and put me in the DYA program. And while I was out, DYA was a, uh, it was a program for the dependents. And I ran a gym in Wiesbaden. So oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Special duty. That was your regular job. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And S special assignment for about a year and a half, actually. Yeah. Okay. So how did it go? It was lovely. I was working inside of the housing area. Right. They had a DYA gym inside the housing area. My responsibility was to open up, you know, chalk the field, you know, sponsor basketball games for the dependents. So that was kind of a, uh, an, an external component outside of my actual serving in, in the military. Again, it was just they, they seen that I was young and I needed to get in a, uh, kind of a situation where I'm not get corrupted by the older Vietnam vets. <laughs> <laughs> And they didn't want that, I'm they sure. They didn't want that, yeah. Right, right. Um, so, was this combat for you? Did you see any combat? No, no combat. All right. No. Not Close combat I seen was Korea. Right. 
Um, okay, so you how long were you there? Three years? Of three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, where did you where did you go after? Did you get to travel while you were there? Yeah. Where did you go? I went to Paris. Mm -hmm. um, we went to London. My mother came in, and um, we just kind of did that whole the, the whole uh, West Germany tour. Mm -hmm. We went to Oktoberfest. Right. And uh, that's kind of the extent of what I did. Right. Mm -hmm. So what about the other countries? Yeah, we went to um, went to Paris. Paris. Yeah, and we went to London. Uh huh. And that was that was pretty much it. Okay. All right. So wh wh where was your next tour? My next tour after that, I got out for about about a few years. Okay. I got out and I went to school. You separated. I separated from the military. I went. I went. Got out in seventy. I got out in, in seventy nine, uh -huh. and I went back in in eighty five. Why? Um, conditions, economic conditions, again, you know, that drove me right back into the military, and I was comfortable with the military, so um, I, I came back in through First Cab. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I came back in through the Seventh Infantry Division. Where were you living at the time you went back in? Grand Rapids, Michigan. So you went mm -hmm. back home. Went back home. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you went back in. Then I went back in. I went to. Uh, Did you have to have any receive any additional training? Or no, 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 no. They, they took me right back in my MOS. Right. I went to. Um, how so, how you were out from seventy nine to eighty five? Eighty five. So you out for almost six years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I went back in, and as I indicated, into the Seventh Infantry Division, um, First Cab. Excuse me, not First Cab, but um, California, mm -hmm. Fort Ord, before they closed the base down. And I left there. Then I went back to Germany again. My second tour in Germany. Oh, okay. So you were in Fort Ord for how long? Um, about two years. And what did you do there? Uh, armament, 45 Bravo, 45 Lima, and uh, tank turret repairment. Okay. Any any casualties? Or did no. You, okay. Did you get hurt at all while you were there? No, not there. All right, cool. All right, so um, I guess it was a tour without any... Yeah. You know, any incidents? Any, any inju injuries or incidents. It was pretty pretty clean tour. Just straight through? Yeah. Okay, and uh, okay, so where did you go next? Um, I left there, then I went to back to Germany. Okay, while you were at Fort Ord, did you travel anywhere? You know, just the, the traditional um, California. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Los Angeles. Um, we also went to Fresno. Okay. Um, so we can and, and, and 17 mile drive. Palm Beach kind of thing. That's where we kind of was extending my travel in, in California. Palm Beach, not Palm Beach. Excuse me. Um, Seventy mile where, where set where Flip Wilson used to live at. It was not seventeen mile. Seventeen mile drive took you all the way to. I'll think of the name of that city in California where it, at that particular time the 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 mayor was Clint Eastwood. Oh, okay, uh, Carmel. Carmel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not a problem. Okay. All right. So that was okay. Yeah. So where did we go? You went back to Wiesbaden. Back to, no, I went back to Giessen. Oh. So I stayed in that whole Wiesbaden area because Giessen was about you know forty five fifty k's from from Wiesbaden. Uh, okay. So I, I I stayed in there, but I spent a lot of time in Grafenwehr in the field. Right. When I was did my second tour. Grafenwehr. Yes. What was that? What big city was that close to? Grafenwehr. It's Frankfurt in, in the Black Forest. Mm. It's more, more of a training, mm. um, a big training component. I can't think of the name of the city that was. We we were known for draft for Grafenwehr. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, how long was that tour? That tour was three years. Did you get to travel outside outside of Germany this time? Uh, no, we kind of st stuck because at that time it was the, 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 a lot of the um, the terrorists was going on. Oh. That's that time, the Mount Baja game. What, went, what, what time frame was that? that? That was right around 75 to about, excuse me, 85 to about 87. Okay. That's when all those those bank presidents was abducted in, in, in Germany at that particular time. Oh, all that, right. Yeah. So we kind of stayed close to the base at that time. Uh -huh. At that time, I, my second tour, I was married. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Um, so I had my wife and I had my baby there on oh. my second tour. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And was that a marriage that you did before you re-enlisted? Yeah. Okay. The second tour. Right, got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. So you take the wife, took the family with you? Yes. Got it. And um, so how long were you there now this time? Um, I, approximately about close to three years. Okay. I, I put a total of almost six years in Europe. Total? Between both, right. both, both extents. Yeah. Okay, so, so the tour went pretty smooth and... Yeah. No issues, no troubles, in and out. How was the food in the military up to this point? 
My second tour, more I was more so because my wife was there, uh -huh. so she was cooking. So I didn't I didn't have to deal with a lot of the the mess off food. But Germany always the food was always good in Germany, right? And I took a I, yeah. took, I took the custom to that uh, this Venus nissels and that type of bratwurst. So yeah, it, it, I, I love the I love the cuisine. The cuisine, Germany. yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. All right. Did you have any problem up to this point uh, staying in touch with your family at all back home? No, no, not at all. Yeah, okay. a lot of. I, then I had my wife, so she made sure. My first tour was a different thing. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, my mother called the Red Cross on me because I was having too good of a time. <laughs> son, it's uh oh. Time, son, it's time for you to at least check in here. Yeah, you know? I, I understand. Okay. Um. All right. So where were you stationed after that? I left there and I went to um, Germany and I went back to First Cav. Okay. Clean, clean, Texas. Uh huh. And I did, this is prior to Desert Storm. I did a couple years there and I was out to go to Korea. And my unit was going to um, Desert Storm. But they diverted me to Korea. Uh huh. So while my unit was in, there was a storm I was in Korea. Okay, and how long were you in Korea? A year. What did you do there? Um, there I was an in-service recruiter. Oh. Yeah, I did in-service recruitment. Okay, I did, retainment. Uh, yeah, retainment. Retention. I, retention. I was, um, I was at the um, race relations. Uh-huh. So I did that whole, you know, kind of work directly with the commander. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow, okay, all right. Okay, so, um, any any casualties? No. Nobody? No. Okay. You know, Korea is always an existing melting pot, which everybody knows. Okay. Because we, I was stationed at Camp Casey, mm -hmm. which was about 21 clicks from the DMZ. Uh huh. So it was always kind of a highly volatile type of situation in Korea. Okay. So anything could pop off any time in Korea. So Korea is a point, a place where you have to stay really focused. Right. You know. Were there any incidences while you were there? No. No. Okay, nobody got hurt. But besides, at that particular time, it seemed like I was going to a situation where the students are rioting. And at the, at the time I was there, the students were like when I was in Germany, yeah. and just like the one when I was in Korea. So the students, again, was at that point of uh, rioting. So they tried to keep us close to the base. And, 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 not, and when we went to Seoul, we had to make sure that we had, you know, accommodations. You just don't go in there because the, the students was riding pretty heavy in South Korea at that particular time. Okay. So it okay. Could be potentially dangerous. Right. Right. Okay. So, um, so due to the fact, okay, this is relevant to your, your wife yes. being with you, mm -hmm. um, and also being in Korea. Yes. All right. Did you feel like the support that you got from the military was sufficient? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. I mean, so you were comfortable, and um, I mean, your family was had a reasonable standard of living during and after. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, okay. So. Did you travel outside of Korea while you were in the Far East? No. 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 Okay. No. No. I at that time again. That's when the that's when the students was riding. Right. So uh, we tried to. I had to go back and forth uh, because I was with retention. Yeah. So I had to take a lot of my paperwork to to Seoul. Okay. To Wijan. How far was that to travel? About an hour. Okay. But, but remember, it's just one road, so if the traffic. You know, one hour could take three hours. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and that's how the the, 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 the the travel in Korea was because you only had one or two roads. And then in one accident, almost like in South Florida, on 95, you got one accident, you, you're stuck in the, the world's biggest parking lot. You know, I was supposed to ask you this two tours back in Germany. Same question for both countries. Mm -hmm. How did, did you interact with the people on the, who lived on the economy? Oh, yes, absolutely. And, yeah. and what was that like? In Germany, um, I, I, in Germany, my first tour, my second tour, I loved it. You know, I, I, my first tour, I was a young bachelor, so obviously I loved that. And I, I loved the, the 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 nightlife there and how we um, kind of interact with the German populations and 
we had strong relationships. And a lot of my friends, a few of my friends got married to German women, so that kind of bridged the relationship with the German population through some of my friends' marriage. Okay. So we did have strong interaction with the German population. Okay. And in Korea? Korea, no. Korea was kind of only time you venture out the gates when you go into the club. All right, and that was that the club on the economy, the club civilian on, club? club on the economy. Yeah. Okay. Everything, everything, all clubbing in Korea was on the economy. Okay. Someone said that's the best kept secret. I have no comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. I can have no comment on that. Right. Yeah, it was a good place. It was okay. Very good place. You got back each time. Got back. That's yeah. all that matters at the, at the moment. Now you mentioned about the protesters. Yes. What what was that? Anti-U.S. I, I in Germany, it was anti-government. Okay, their government. Their government okay. and um, the establishment, if you will. Okay. In Korea, it was the establishment as well. The government as well it was not. So it was like hippies in the sixties and seventies. Absolutely, it wasn't really reflected to the military. Not the military. Okay. Because, not against the United yeah, States. Because uh, a lot of the South Koreans really respected, the, particularly the older ones. They re really respected the military being presence in, in South Korea. Okay. So we had no problem with that. But um, both of them was more so internal relationship. Germany was more internal and Korea was more internal in terms of the, their, their issues and their economy. Right. Not reflected to the military, United States government. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's good news. Okay. So, um... So how long, what, what year did you finish your tour in Korea? Uh, Korea I was done in uh, 1992, 1991. Okay. And then um, 19, 1991 I went back to First Cab again, mm -hmm. back to Clean, Texas. Okay. To Fort Hood again. Okay. And that's where I began to start processing for retirement. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the entire time you were in the service, did you use the GI Bill for education? Um, no, I, you know, when you're in the service, you didn't have to necessarily use your GI Bill. Right. And most of my college was through University of Maryland while I was, while, while I was actively serving. Oh. Yeah. That's, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So did you finish your degree before you uh, uh, separated? No, I finished when I got out. Okay. All right. And what did you get a degree in? Marketing, business management. And what school did you finish? Um, over here to Miami Dade College. Oh, okay. Now, okay. Mm -hmm. Here, right here in Miami. All right, cool. All right, so, um... So you separated finally in 91? 92. 92? Yes. And you were in Korea at that time? Yeah, well, I, I left Korea uh -huh. and I separated from, from Fort Hood, Texas. Right. And that's when my separation started in oh. Fort Hood, not Korea. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay, so Fort Hood was your last duty base? Yes. And what did you do there for, in what period of time, how long was that? Um, Fort Hood, um, I, at, when I was stationed in Fort Hood, I was working with Department of Logistics uh -huh. with DOL. Okay. And in DOL, my, my responsibility was to prep the M1 battle tanks to M, from M1 to M1A2. So that's, I did that as I processed out, um, out of the military. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was in 92. Okay. Any casualties? No casualties. Did you travel at all around Texas? Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you go? We went to San Antonio, uh, went to Houston, uh, went to um, Dallas, you know, the, the typical okay. you know, um, Texas kind of thing. How was the food? Food good, really good. A lot of Mexican food, really good. Okay, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, any, any casualties while you were there? Anybody get hurt? No, I mean, I, I got beat down just from the knees, you know, continuous jumping out of trucks. You know, that my, that's where my disability, with my blood pressure, as well, but a lot of the beat down just out of trucks on my back and my knees. So right. there wasn't no casualties in relationship to combat, just your normal duty right. responsibilities. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, and you still the family was still in tow. Yes. Of course. Yes. All right. So how long? How, I'm just curious. How how old was your baby by the time you separated? My daughter was. Eight. Okay. When we separated. Got gotcha. you. All right. So you separated in Texas. Yes. And so while you were in the military, how did you get along with um, 
with enlisted and officers? I, at that particular time, I was with Department of Logistics. Mm -hmm. So a lot well, of what, what rank were you when you when you finally separated? E seven. Okay. So I was with Department of Logistics. So there was a lot of communication with, when you're with Department of Logistics because there's a lot of moving parts in there between the officers, between the enlisted, between politicians, and some of the things that we're doing. A lot of traveling, um, a lot of vendors coming, selling selling products. To the, to the United States government. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the extent of how I began to transition out um, and what I was doing with Department of Logistics and the relationship that I had to accumulate or had to manage between officers because of my duty and my responsibilities. Right. Okay. So you got along with everybody? Yeah, everybody. Okay. Le learned a lot about diplomacy, I take it? Absolutely. It's <laughs> working very well now. Right. Okay. All right. Good, good. All right. Um, Medals and citations. Um, archive. Uh, two archives. I got um, Army Service Ribbon. I got. Um, what was the first one? The, uh, the first one was the Ar Archive. Uh, Army Com Commendation Medal. Oh, okay. With, with, with three gold leaves on it. Nice. You know? Then I've got the um, Overseas. I've got the, um, the, 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 the traditional medals that you get outside of the Army Accommodation Medals. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. I ended up with maybe eight or nine. Gotcha. All right. Um, so pre tell me, pressure and stress. Mm -hmm. Did you experience a lot of that while you were on active duty? In my, my first tour, because it was 1976 and we were dealing with a lot of Vietnam veterans coming out. And there was, the racism was pretty prevalent back in 1976, 75. Okay. So there were some officers that we dealt with that came out of, out of the academy, the tr traditional butter bar lieutenants, you know. Butter were, bar? Yeah. Um, second lieutenants. Okay. And, and traditionally, you know, those types of guys, they think the world revolves around them when they come to a duty station. Right. But for, for, from a pressure perspective, um, I, I, I handle pressure very well. Okay. I didn't let it really stop my focus on what my job and my responsibility, particularly when I became a non-commissioned officer. As a leader, there's a certain way that you have to handle pressure. Right. You know, leaders leaders do not, they take a pressure situation and they diffuse it, not integrate it to your subordinates. So um, I handled pressure very well okay. when I served. All right. Good news. Okay. Um, tell me two of your most memorable experiences while you were on active duty? I think my second tour, one of my colleagues was working on an M1 battle tank and the nitrogen wasn't drained in the equilibrators and that thing rocked out of the rocked out of the, the saddle and caught him on his head all the way down to the bone. That's always had an impact on, on me in terms of memorable. I remember that, uh -huh. you know. Um, and just having fun. You know, just the nightlife in Germany was just amazing as a young, young guy who didn't know, have no responsibilities. Um, so it's between having a good time and remember that incident that happened with one of my colleagues. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, all right. So, oh, did you, um, have you stayed in touch with any of your military? Yeah. Yeah. I've got a, matter of fact, one of my dearest friends that, that I was a roommate with, I mean, we were talking 30 years ago. Right. Um, he came into the picture, caught me on Facebook. And, um, and, you know, this is a 30, 35 year kind of relationship that I was, we stayed in the same room. So came back with him and I have another one of my partners from Fort Hood that we stay in contact with. Mm. And then we have a first cab, we have a, um, we have a web page on, on Facebook where we try to find all of our first cab partners. Right. And try to integrate relationships with them. Got you. Okay, cool. Uh, you belong to any military organizations now? American Legion. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, you you attend any reunions? No. Okay. Last couple of questions. Um, so okay. 
So when you got out of the service, mm -hmm. what did you do? When I got out of the service, um, just prior to me leaving, my wife left and started prepping up our our transition back into Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. Um, my daughter stayed with me. For, this is about six months in this transition, so my daughter stayed with me, and while my wife was getting getting situated, she got a job with an organization called Consumer Powers. It's like an electrical company, like FPNL, and and I came back out and got a, I got a job at the same same um, activity. Right. So we both were working for an electrical company, so that was a really good... In Michigan? In Michigan, yeah. Uh -huh. That was a really good transition for us to, to come out the military and, and come out into some sustainable opportunities, and we had acquisition a couple homes. Oh. So we were in a pretty good position when we got out. Okay. Okay. And why you, why you in the service? Was your wife working the whole time? Now, my wife is a Jehovah Witness. Okay. And she was not, because of her religion, she couldn't work for the federal government. But what she did do, when we were in Germany, she babysit it. Did very well. Right. When I was in um, in Texas, she was she was part of the maintenance team in the condos that we lived in. So she always supplemented. She always brought in. You know, she could have got a got job with the government, but because of her religion, and I respected that. Um, that she she did what she had to do for the family. She did it very well. Okay. Okay. Can't can't knock that. Um. So you finished college afterwards yes. here in Miami. Mm -hmm. So how did you get from Michigan to Miami? My mother is a retired executive. This is a funny question. My mother is a retired, retired executive for General Motors. Mm -hmm. And she retired. And uh, we, have, so we had um, generational property in the Bahamas on Andros Island. Uh -huh. So what we did, we created a company called Lord & Humes International. And coming over, coming to Miami, I stopped at the, at the Bahamas first to develop this business plan, the strategic business plan in partnership with the BAIC, which is the Bahamian Agriculture Investment Corps. Okay. So I came here really to, to generate um, um, manufacturing opportunities on this island that we own a tremendous amount of land. Right. And then it transitioned back over here to Miami. So my first stop in South Florida was in the, actually was in the Bahamas. Right to set up the marketing, set up the strategy, etc., and then come back here to set up the distribution. So I came down here really to help my mother who was, had, had arthritis. She retired with two doctor's degree and high-level executive, and she wanted to begin to develop the Bahamas. So okay. we, brought, we went to uh, Family Bookstore, and Family Bookstore issued us like 2,000 Bibles, so we were able to take 2,000 Bibles over into the Bahamas oh, wow. as a process and kind of, kind of set up where I'm at right now. From a spiritual perspective, if you will. Okay, okay, all right. Um, I'd like to hear some more about your career after, but I want to ask you a couple of more military questions, mm -hmm. and we can clean that up. Mm -hmm. um, how did how did um, your military experience um, affect your life? Oh wow. The the army, the armed forces, I can truly say was the best thing that happened to me. A lot of issues in the military, a lot of situations, but it set me up for where I'm at now. And I'm in a pretty good position to really to do some significant things for our veterans uh -huh. and for our transitioning service members. So it gave me that integrity, it gave me that leadership capacity, it gave me the, the, uh, the abilities to operate off the fly. It, 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 it showed me how to logistically create force multipliers, a lot of the terminologies in the military, one particular one called the metal missing essential task listing. Uh -huh. So I was able to incorporate all of that, all of that structure, that infrastructure, and uh, and training and learning into an occupational strategy. What I'm in, what we're engaging now. Okay. So it was a really good. It it, it was a, the military is only what you make it. At the end of the day. And if you if you able to able to take the, the information that was compiled. And then you, and use it effectively. When you separate, it becomes a force multiplier. But everybody doesn't get that because there's different variables as people begin to transition out. I, I was one of the lucky ones. Okay. Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Uh, my military thinking, everything I do from a business perspective, is military related. Okay. Everything, to include. I, I read this great book couple great books. One of them is, is the basic 
the Bible, and the other one is the Senju, Art of War and Business. Uh -huh. And Senju, every, who knows about Senju, you know, he was uh, in the dying ministry. He was he had the ability of mobilizing people. Right. You know, and his whole conflict, the best war is a war that was never fought. Exactly. So I, I integrate the, these strategies into my day-to-day -day operation. Uh -huh. And it works for me.